What is up everybody and welcome back to The Obsession. Yesterday we got word that Silent Hill was officially being added to Dead by Daylight by way of Cheryl and Pyramid Head. And in this video we're going to be breaking down Pyramid Head, aka the Executioner's abilities and his perks directly from the PTB that also went live yesterday. Now, before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below to stay up to date with future news and tutorials. Now let's dive right in. Let's start with the basics. Pyramid Head is a tall killer with 115% walking speed, which is on par with most killers in the game. Keep in mind survivors run at a 100% speed. Now when charging his M2 ability, he briefly drops to a 92%, very temporarily. And when his ability is charged up, he can move at 110% in his torment mode. This means that when using his M2, he is still faster than survivors, which is interesting information to have. His terror radius, of course, is 32 meters, which is on par with most killers in the game as well. Now, let's take a look at his abilities, as initially they sound complicated, but they change up the meta of the game and the way that the game is played very, very significantly, in my opinion. So, he has a normal attack with his great knife, there's nothing crazy there. But as mentioned before, he has an M2 ability called Rites of Judgment. Now, Rites of Judgment, using the power button ability, allows him to carve a trail into the ground behind him, slowly burning his meter. Remember, while carving this trail, he moves at 110%, so he's still faster than survivors. Now, if any survivor sprints across the trail that he is left behind, they'll trigger a passive ability called Killer Instinct, and this triggers and lasts for about 3 seconds. Now, this essentially shows the killer your location via heartbeat, similar to Legion or Demogorgon. Now, it is worth noting you cannot place the Rites of Judgment trail too close to generators or hooks. The trail actually ends up disappearing if you do so. And survivors can crouch walk through the trail without triggering Killer Instinct or the debuff that we're about to mention here. So it acts sort of like Hag's Traps where you can crouch walk through it. Now, if a survivor does sprint through the Rites of Judgment, they also, on top of the Killer Instinct passive ability, get afflicted with Torment. Torment initially doesn't do a lot. It doesn't look like it does much. You can see in the bottom left that barbed wire circles your character icon, and you leave a trail of barbed wire behind you on top of your scratch marks. Uh, Torment status effect actually doesn't have a timer either. It shows up on screen, but initially, again, it doesn't seem to do a lot. However, if a survivor is downed while they have the Torment status effect, you can send them directly to a Cage of Atonement. Now the Cage of Atonement immediately absorbs the survivor into the ground and sends them into a cage across the map from your position, where they essentially appear as being hooked. Now, the cage isn't actually considered a hook, so perks like Thrilling Tremors, Barbecue and Chili, etc. do not activate. Survivors hang in the cage as normal until they're tier two if they're not rescued, the struggle state. Once they enter struggle state, they have to do skill checks instead of mashing spacebar or your assigned buttons, and failing a skill check results in death. Survivors getting out of the Cage of Atonement also cannot use perks like D-Strike, uh, they cannot use uh, perks like Deliverance, uh, Borrowed Time also does not work coming off of the Cage of Atonement. Being rescued from the Cage of Atonement also removes the Torment status effect unless you walk through a Rites of Judgment trail again. What is a new killer without a special attack? The Executioner can also use Punishment of the Damned, which is their special attack. While your sword is in the ground using Rites of Judgment, you can use your M1 or Normal Attack button to unleash a trail attack in front of you for a set distance. This trail can hit through walls, through windows, through pallets, etc., and can hit multiple people. It's also worth noting that if close enough, you can actually hit the survivor with the ability and the sword itself, causing two simultaneous hits or an insta-down. Now this ability acts sort of similar to Huntress, where you sort of have to prep it if somebody's going to drop a pallet or somebody's going to vault a window, but there's a lot of mind games that can happen here very similar to Huntress, but this is also something that's easy to juke if you're a survivor who understands mind games and uh, can outrun or outplay the killer. 
Now, lastly, if you down a survivor while they have the torment status effect, and it is about to be their final hook or their death hook, you can actually uh, perform the final judgment, which is a mori, if you will, that will kill them immediately on the spot. Keep in mind that this requires that you already be on death hook, so you can't die prematurely or after one hook or anything like that. This has to be on your final uh, down, your final hook. Pyramid Head comes with three unique perks. The first one is Forced Penance. Survivors who take protection hits are inflicted with broken status effect for up to 30 seconds. Of course, protection hits are if somebody is wounded and a healthy survivor takes a hit for them, as an example. The second is Trail of Torment. After kicking a generator, you become undetectable for 15 seconds. Survivors can see the gen that you kicked be highlighted in a yellow aura, and this perk can only be activated every 80 seconds at Tier 3. And the third perk is Deathbound. When a survivor heals another survivor for one health state at least 32 meters away from the killer, the survivor who performed the healing action will scream, revealing their location and activating this perk for 45 seconds. During this time, the survivor will suffer from oblivious when further than eight meters away from the healed survivor. So Deathbound sort of ends up requiring that if you heal somebody, you stick with them for a duration of time, 45 seconds or so, which for a lot of killers will work in their favor, like Plague or people that can hit multiple survivors at once. The perks provided via Pyramid Head are actually intended to prevent protection hits and punish altruism, but in my opinion, Deathbound is really the only perk that we will consistently see in any meta or anything of that sort. Um, but there's no doubt that all three perks have their place depending on the killer you're gonna run, and I bet that they're probably gonna be a little bit underrated for a while. But what do you think? Is Pyramid Head too strong? What are his perks? Do you think they're good or bad? Do you think he needs a nerf with his Cage of Atonement? Let me know, and of course I'll keep you updated with more videos, and we will pray to the Entity to see you next time.